Hi, Misha here, and welcome to a big black box. Aren't you entertained? And I'm actually doing it in here because it's too big to open on the table. People have asked us about various Burger and Tomat, B&T, guns. And to be fair, I was probably one of the first to pick up a TP9 back when DSA was importing them. That must have been 2000. 8, 2009, I don't know. And I've had two of those over time. But for whatever reason, the TP9 just never quite did it for me. For one thing, when those were available originally, braces didn't exist yet. Heck, even angled foregrips didn't exist yet. So as a pure pistol, a little underwhelming. Plus it was really B&T's first effort at a firearm. And I think it, it does kind of show. So my last uh, TP9, uh, Jay was interested in, so I let him have it. it uh, you know, and that, that seems to work out well. And that was pretty much it for me. Um, the Swiss military has adopted some of those. They are called the MP9 for select fire and are called the... MP14 in the Swiss military. Neat, but small, kind of PDW type guns in limited circulation, so I could live without. But then, in 2019, the U.S. Army announced the SCW, and I became interested again. And what we have here in this case is a gun that probably has a too long a name. The B&T U.S. Army SCW Limited Commemorative Edition APC 9K Pro Pistol Kit. And I just got this in. On a trade and uh, I have mixed feelings about it when I opened it up honestly I was a little disappointed but it was mostly because of a misunderstanding and as the days gone on I have warmed up to it so I thought I would explain why what's in the kit and of course as always talk about history and some of the features Although, to be fair, if you want to know features, Military Arms Channel, TFP TV, and many, many others have already gone into that. So, you'll get kind of my take, and maybe you'll understand why this was of some interest to me. So, with that, let's kind of go back to the morning when I first cracked this open from the mailman. First off, looking at the interwebs, this kit is to come in a Pelican case. Got that? is to have the modern second generation APC-9. Got that. It's to come with three magazines, although some sources say 330s, some say 115 and 230s. It's also supposed to come with an Aimpoint Nano on a BNT low riser. It's supposed to come with a coin, documentation, and a dead letter sling bag. So when I opened it up, you know, when I think of a kit, a special edition kit, I kind of think of something like that uh, Swiss SGGW07 we showed you last year. Everything as it would be issued. And so when opening this up first, it didn't really seem as such. We have some paperwork here. more here. I'm sure that's fine and dandy if you can see to read it. We have the three mags. Like I said, this one has the 230s plus the 15 and they all have the bumper. We have this thing. Made of metal. Kind of neat, I suppose. Looks like you could probably pick an old school door with it. 
and we have a what is purported to be a 99% authentic pure silver challenge coin and I believe it has the serial of the gun on it and so when I opened the box that's what I saw so what makes this special and worth the premium now to be fair the APC 9 is expensive already especially the K Pro this does have a brace adapter with the Gearworks tail hook mod 1 brace up here we do have our optic mount so that's all there this is also on a special serial range they made 150 excuse me 350 of these with 333 being sold to the public so it's a one of numbered although compared to some of the guns we deal with and you do too that that actually seems kind of large but you know there's a reason behind that number that i'll get to later in the video but what i'm not seeing a mag pouch a uh, sling mag loader not seeing anything like that so really aside from this card and the coin paperwork certificate of authenticity it basically just seems like you get the uh, brace and you get the optic and you get a total of three mags instead of usually just one to be fair I will say that when DSA was importing the TP9 they did come with two mags so it's like, eh, it's, it's neat, but, eh, I don't know, it's kind of, eh. Plus, many websites say that the military, the Select Fire version, has a folding stock. So I was thinking, well, if it has a folding stock, why are they putting a collapsible, adjustable thing on this? Because isn't this supposed to look as close to the military as, uh, as possible? So I was like, yeah, that's... I mean, I'm sure it's a good arm brace, but meh. But I uh, stepped back for a minute and took a shower. And then realized I had overlooked a couple of things and kind of reevaluated. So now let's fast forward till the early afternoon. Now to the regular table. The Pelican case, although it's very big, they have a lot of wasted space and i didn't realize that i kind of assumed everything would fit in it it wasn't until i talked to the person that i got this from that he said something i actually called him and i said what sling are they using on these because i want to see if i've got one like it or shorter one and he said oh there's a sling in there and i said no there's not i even kind of lifted the foam looked underneath and i said i didn't see that uh, dead letter bag either and he said oh they would they don't fit in the uh in the case so they had to be separate and they were at the bottom of the box and so then I found some more accoutrement here we have the Microtech knife this also serial matches the kit you know one of 333 or 350 if you want to be like that paperwork Microtex always uh, made good knives. I'm not particularly a knife person, but it is neat. There's actually a spot for this in the case next to the mags, but only outside of its box. In the box, it don't fit. And then here's our bag. Now, don't get me wrong. The stuff here is not in this bag worth a just a, a ton of money but sometimes the devil's in the details here we have that sling i was looking for i'm also happy to report that looks like bnt has improved their slings since the early mp9 tp9 days still a pretty standard single point but it's soft pretty lightweight we have cleaning kit stuff And 
There's also something that I kind of cheated. That's another reason I was a little bummed out. Where did I put it? Yeah, so there is one more thing to note. Here's our pistol out of its black box, and this is how the front end looked when I first saw it. I obviously knew this was threaded, and it's obviously half by 28, but not knowing there was another couple of things in the outer cardboard box, I was a little disappointed it didn't have the three lug, the tri lug adapter, which I was kind of thinking that was part of it. So I was actually quite delighted when I uh, found that in the box. And that's actually a piece that might cost a dime to replace. You know how anything BT, H and K, SIG, even Steyr costs. Although I think this solution is a little odd. I'd prefer this lug to be actually be part of the barrel as opposed to a screw-on piece. I mean, it's better than nothing, but I kind of like the method more where this front part is threaded and covered with a cap. But you know what? I'm not going to complain too much because at least it does have the tri-lug now. And here is our gun. So finding the sling, the cleaning kit, and the tri-lug certainly improved my mood a great deal. Also, lunch. Lunch helped a lot, too. Fun with Microtex. There really are neat knives. All right, back to gun stuff. So by this point, I feel like I got everything I thought I would. I know things like sling shouldn't matter, but it does to me anyway. But there was also this question in my mind of this collapsing arm brace. If the original military gun had a collapsing stock, okay, cool, fine. But about the first dozen websites I read, said that the Selectfire APC-9K Pro had a, quote, folding stock. But luckily, I was able to straighten that out with some help again from the individual this came from. And, yeah, it's a pretty neat <clears throat> setup here. Just to, you know, pull it out. It has a total of four positions. Extends out pretty well. Made of metal. So about the only thing you are missing is the vertical foregrip. This did come with a very uh, simple stop. Let me flip it over here. On the uh, lower rail, I did move it to the side. Has a small hole for another sling. But I wanted to have this clear to put a vertical foregrip or something there. So now we have a three lug. We have a brace that mimics the military stock. And I'm, I am really feeling I'm a lot better about this. Of course, the aim point, I'm sure it's an excellent little sight. It doesn't do me a lot of good. It does have the standard flip up poly sights for backup of course ambidextrous non-reciprocating handles ambidextrous controls quite a respectable trigger and so on and so forth so why did I want this version well most of you probably guessed it because it's 
the SCW, subcompact weapon, personal defense type weapon, protection weapon, adopted by the U.S. Army, and recently also the U.S. Air Force. And it does have an interesting place in history, although to date, fewer than 500 are in service. That number could rise to 2,000 or more quite quickly based on the terms of the contract. But with that, let's kind of talk about BNT, originally Burger and Tomat, Bruger, however. <laughs> and, uh, you know, how they kind of got into this and how it was really kind of an accident in a, in a lot of ways, if you think about it. It's an interesting story. And here we have the HK Mark 23. Why is this here? Well, for one thing, while it's smaller, it's nearly as heavy. And this was kind of an early, quote-unquote, offensive pistol. But um, it definitely showed, even in the 90s, that the U.S. military was sometimes buying very specialized weapons. Brugger and Tomac got started not as a firearms manufacturer, but originally as a suppressor manufacturer. So I put a fake one on here just for the look of it. Three lugs are neat. After that, they kind of got into the spare parts game, the buttstock game, supplying components to various manufacturers. And that's actually what led them to first try and win, first to enter a U.S. trial. They submitted a suppressor for the Mark 23 when they were trying out for a new one. Now they didn't win, but it gave them experience and a little bit of exposure. And they would enter into the firearms game around 2001. See, back in the late 80s, early 90s, Steyr in Austria had worked on a little PDW called the TMP with the semi-automatic version known as the SPP. But it really wasn't very successful. Well, Brugger and Thomat purchased the design, made many changes, almost two dozen, and reintroduced it as the MP9, select fire, TP9, semi-automatic. And this would hit the market around 2004-2005. And that's how I was able to first pick up a M uh, T TP9. And nah, I guess I saw them around 2008, maybe 2007 for the first time. Interesting gun, but kind of limited for what it was. But one thing I'll say, they weren't uber expensive. And they were reliable. And they actually used these magazines, which were updates of the Steyr TMP mags. But that was them working on someone else's design, and I think it shows. The the uh, MP9 doesn't quite have that Swiss elegance. It's clearly a different thing, but it was neat. It had a rotating barrel system. It's quite lightweight and under 4 pounds, loaded up. Had a 5-inch barrel. It's actually, yeah, it has been adopted for limited use in the Swiss military as the MP14. And a few other police and military agencies have, have purchased it here and there over the years, too. But after getting this on market, Carl, Carl, excuse me, Bruger, of the Bruger and Thumat, really wanted to make a clean sheet, new design that could be all their own. And he was hoping for kind of a modernized MP5. Kind of sounds like the Scorpion to me, but either way, he worked on that submitting a design and he went through a few iterations and this is where they kind of learned more research development and designing from the ground up the new gun would kind of hit testing in 2010 and first be shown off at trade shows in 2011 known as the APC advanced police carbine of course, APC-9, APC-40, APC-45, you get the idea, eventually becoming the 223s and all that. Now, these guns, that was the Generation 1, were straight blowback, although they did end up with a hydraulic buffer. And they had more metal than the uh, MP9, so a little heavier. 
but they were built to be a little more durable but also compact. The original APC-9 had a barrel just a hair under 7 inches. And then they would create the APC-9K for Austria's counterterrorism squad, Cobra. And this would be the first APC-9K and it would be the shortest gun with a barrel around 5 inches. Some sources say 5.5, take it as you will. And they would have a, a number of customers, uh, mostly police, a few government agencies. And then they would open up B and T in the USA. Now, interestingly, Berger and Tomat Europe, AG, was going to focus on select fire, military, some law enforcement contracts. B and T USA was actually meant to focus on the civilian, the commercial market, with a little bit of police contract work. So it's kind of all the more interesting that BNT USA ended up with a pretty notable military contract. But yeah. But they did work with the design. And they would introduce the second generation known as the APC-9 Pro Series. And there are a lot of changes. I'm not going to go over them here. But some of them are the fact that it can use standard AR type pistol grips. They reworked the safety to have kind of a more of a short throw, easier to use, more ergonomic. They went to an ambidextrous folding, non-reciprocating cocking handle. They made three lug a standard feature. They made the forearm M-lock compatible. They went away from kind of the side folding stock early on, but they would continue to improve it. They would also improve their barrel manufacturing techniques. And they would modify it so that the lowers could be swapped out. You would not only be able to feed from their mags, but it would be able to feed from other mags. Namely in the beginning Glock, later SIG P320. And of course they can make different lowers for different things. In general it was just a much more refined design in the ergonomics department. And uh, this seems to have... Uh, kind of been the tipping point and where they really gained some traction and notoriety especially with the US government and here we have the full kit laid out again these are some pouches I found that hold the mags just some ones that I had in the old parts bin I used to use them for my PS90 mags hmm, worked quite well enough and I had exactly three so that was nice of course, here's our little microtech again. Neat stuff. And our special duper card. It is metal. And of course, our challenge coin here comes in this plastic protector. It serial matches everything too. And of course the pouch that I originally didn't find. So yeah, that was kind of day one. My kind of learning about this gun. And this is a good stopping part for part one. Otherwise this is going to be well over an hour video. I think we're, we're at a good time here. In part two, we'll... Kind of talk about the SCW program, as well as talk about how this did at the range. And maybe even compare it with a few other similar guns. You never know. So what do you think so far about the uh, APC-9 Pro in general? And this SCW package in particular. It has certainly grown on me after day one. And we'll see how it goes after we take it to the range. As always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you know what to do. Much appreciated if you could check out the link to the Patreon page. And again, as always, please feel free to comment below. And with that, this is Misha. To be continued.